Long live the king. Is that supposed to be a political remark? I don't know anything about politics. Do you play? I never work if I can help it. I meant chess. It's a very interesting game. So is this one we're playing. Would you like a drink? I wouldn't mind. But waiter. Bring us a bottle of Chateau Marmont, 1907. 1911 was a better year. 1911 it is. We don't have any Chateau Marmont, but we have a good Chateau Briand, 1922. Forget it. Make it a couple of rum columns, two of 58. You say? I had to be sure it was you. XK120? Right. XK150? Right. Who's the waiter? One of them. Thinks I'm on their side. She was beautiful. I could have killed myself for wearing this stupid disguise. Now she would never know me as I really am. I'm leaving tonight. We'll keep in touch by radio. You have the code. In point of fact? Yes. In point of fact? Yes. In point of fact, I've got my Dakota ring. Right. Pay no attention to me when I leave. Right. Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? Right.
the 20th century occurred in Havana, Cuba. The revolutionary victors marched in and the national complexion changed completely. They had been liberated. The survivors of the old regime escaped as best they could, taking with them only a few meager effects, such as the Cuban treasury and other art objects. It wasn't always easy to smuggle a loot out of Cuba, and so secret meetings were being held all over the island. This story of robbery, double cross, and murder begins with just such a meeting. Lorenzo Capetto? I am. Who are you? Never mind who I am. It's the mission that counts. Let's get on with it. As an American gambler and gangster, you're above suspicion. Of course, you know that our government has been overthrown. You know, I heard that. Shut up. But not for long. We'll be back. And if you think you're seeing executions now, oh boy. Bravo. Bravissimo. Uh, but of course, in order to uh, finance our great counter-revolution, it has been necessary for us to uh, steal the Cuban treasure. Oh, uh, shut up. Let us proceed. You're going to lose your casino, so you'll be leaving Cuba anyway. You have a big yacht, and you can leave any time you wish, such as immediately. Therefore, I'm going to entrust you a solemn trust. Here we have one-fourth of the Cuban treasure. Your group, General Tostada, Coronel Cabeza Grande, and a squad of men will proceed to Ciudad Trujillo. There you'll wait for us to contact you and relieve you of the money, one-fifth of which will be paid to you. Do you understand? I get the whole picture. Now you do the rest. Senores? General Tostada, Coronel Cabeza Grande, Senor Renzo Capetto, y... Uh... My name is Happy Jack Monahan. Glad to meet you, Jim. Mis buenos amigos americanos, nos cabe el honor de preservar el honor del honor cubano. En un solemne acto de confianza han confiado en nuestras confiables manos ese botín con el cual reconstruiremos todo lo que Castro piensa construir. Yo saludo. And now, the gold. You two had better get into the car. The general doesn't know any English, Senor Capetto. I'll be his translator for you. Bueno? Bueno. Bueno. Metanse al auto. Now it's time to go. Adios. Adios. I'll see you later, huh? Hello. first move in the great conspiracy had been made. The Cuban treasury was now in the gentle hands of Renzo Capetto, the most trustworthy man ever to be deported from Sicily. They thought they were smart, but little did they know that I, Sparks Moran, was an American agent. 
Luckily, I had been able to work my way into the crew by posing as a notorious gum machine burglar from Chicago. My real name is XK-150. Hey, you. Come on down here and help with this. How'd it go, Booksy? We had a hairy little chase, but we got the stuff. Crazy. Hey, Colonel Grande, you can bring your men aboard. What happens with all that mob? I don't know. I thought we'd just have an officer or two, but it looks like we're going to have a little difficulty. You will think of a way to remove them and grab that loot? Because you're my big, strong, swinging brain. Mm. You're sweet, baby. Hi, sis. Hi, baby doll. Did they scare you? Ah, uh, just a little. Oh. All right, boys. Get ready to go. Pete, take the wheel. Jack, you and uh, Clarks, uh, Sparks, get ready to cast off. Well, well, this is a beautiful night for sailing. And so we left Cuba forever. Sailing the most astounding adventure to be inflicted upon man. And what a group we were. The big cheese was Renzo Capetto, alias Capo Rosetto, alias Rado Pizzetti, alias Zeppo Staccato, alias Shirley Lamour. At 15, he served his first stretch for rolling a drunk in the lobby of the Waldorf Astoria New Year's Eve, 1934. In 1940, he was involved in an unsuccessful attempt to nominate Benito Mussolini for the Republican ticket. During the war, he was rejected by the Navy, Marines, and the SS. Now deported, he has retained his contacts with the Syndicate and is still regarded as a dangerous character. Mary Bell Monaghan, alias Mary Monaghan Bell, alias Bell Mary Monaghan, alias Monaghan Mary Bell. They say she was a gun mall just because Lucky Luciano gave her a Rolls Royce every Christmas. And they can't really prove that she sneaked into the Hollywood Bowl with a Tommy gun and rubbed out the convention of police chiefs in 1956. Oh, I know that she got nailed cold when she was pushing heroin in a laundry room at Boys Town. But I'm willing to give anyone the benefit of the doubt. Especially when she's as crazy looking as Mary Bell. This is Happy Jack Monahan. So called because he developed a muscle spasm in his cheeks from watching too many Humphrey Bogart pictures. Happy Jack's record is brief. His only crimes having been committed after his sister, Mary Bell, talked Renzo into giving him a job. Up until that time, Happy Jack had been a tennis bum, sleeping under the bleachers at Forest Hills and mooching nickels in the BMT subway. Since taking up with Renzo, he has become a well known dice loader and murderer. The most of the dark quartet is Pete Peterson, Jr., son of Pete Peterson, Sr., famed vaudeville bird mimic. Pete, Jr. inherited his father's talent for animal imitations, but unfortunately blew his brain out of whack while imitating a whooping crane at the Elks Convention picnic in Oshkosh in 1942. Since then, anyone has been able to convince Pete of anything. Renzo found him struggling along as a pickpocket at Jones Beach and took him with him in his exile. Since then, he has been Renzo's faithful servant, shining his shoes and rubbing out his enemies. In return, Renzo permits him to imitate any animal that comes into his head. That, for instance, was the mating call of the Himalayan yak. There they are, my shipmates. I didn't know where they were taking those unsuspecting Cubans, but I knew they were taking them. And so, with grim faces, we set our helm against the perilous future. Okay, now before I begin, does anyone anything to say? Pete? Mm. How about you, Jack? What do you think we should do? You up? Oh, now, honey, is that any way for Mary Bell's big man to talk? Oh, now, look. We've got to get rid of at least half of these Cubans without making the rest of them suspicious. There used to be a Cuban fisherman by the name of Hemingway. 
got hooked on a sea monster in these waters a couple of years ago, and he was dragged for miles. Got a lot of publicity. We're gonna show these boys the greatest sea monster they ever saw in their lives. Jack, in my trunk, there's some garden rakes used for weeding tomatoes. You get them and, and sharpen them like scalpers. Pete, you mix up a mess of olive oil and green ink and snag some seaweed from over the side. Now, Jack, what are you gonna do? Sharpen up the garden rakes? Good boy. Pete, how about you? Does he have to do that? All right, Jack. Do that. We've had a good life together, haven't we, baby? Mm, you know it, folks. Winters in Tijuana, summers in Cicero. Remember that wonderful trip we took to Monte Carlo? You mean the time we heisted all those hundred dollar chips? Sure. I'll admit, I couldn't really hear anything through that door, but I was sure they were up to no good. I knew it was up to me to stop them. Now we're off again to parts unknown. It's like a second honeymoon. You know something? We ought to get married. Now, don't be a drag, baby. <laughs> How much Jack do you think is in that strong arm? There's plenty of Cuban sugar, though. What are we going to do with all of it? I don't know. I always wanted to open up a home for the aged hoodlums. Baby, you got a heart as big as all outdoors. A government agent lives in constant peril. I devised my undetectable radio set using simulated hot dogs for knobs and tubes inside of dill pickles while watching a number of sewer workmen during lunch hour. It comes in mighty handy, believe you me. One little slip and I could be headed for Davy Jones' locker. Hello, Havana, this is Agent XK-150. Over. I'm making my first official report. So far, not too much has happened, but I'm anticipating. Renzo Capetto and his gang are on board as suspected. I am with them. I will call you again soon, one of these days. This is Agent XK-150 signing off. Gee, that looks good. Do you mind if I join you? Encantadora y hermosa María Puta. The general says, Good morning, you gorgeous, beautiful creature. Would you ask the general to remove himself from my presence? Um, ella dice que muy buenos días para usted, mi general. Usted para mí es como una flor del mar, como un ángel de Neptuno sonriéndole al mundo. The general says you are um, you are a uh, golden angel flower singing. Would you tell the general that I feel that he'd be most at home, barbecuing slowly over a hot spit? Um, ella dice que mi general es un hombre muy digno y de gran empuje. You must be a 
a glutton for punishment. Oh. oh, now, what do you want? You're too good for this life. You're young and you're innocent. You should get out. Well, look at it, you're good. Are you unwell? The getting is great. You're a victim of circumstance. I try. I do try. You're a crazy mixed up kid. I am perfectly adjusted to my life of crime. Now, what is your story? Oh, well, you see, I'm beyond help, but you're not. You can find a clean young man to marry and... I haven't got the time. But I can help you, Mary Bell. You can turn blue. Don't worry, Mary Bell. I'll save you. I die. That's a comforting alternative. A secret agent should never sleep. But there I was, dreaming of Mom's apple pie, while up on deck, Renzo and his cutthroats were taking the first step, killing an innocent Cuban and pretending some imaginary monster did it just so they would be panicked into changing course so that Renzo could steer them to his own picked destination. What none of us knew was that the monster invented by Renzo had already been invented by somebody else. By a couple of other monsters, I guess. han sido cobardemente asesinados. Debemos encontrar al que cometió este cobarde asesinato para que esto no vuelva a suceder. What did he say? Did you know says what happened? Well, I have an idea if you'd like to hear. Please go ahead. Well, I don't think it was anything human that killed your soldiers. Seen the tracks and the claw wounds on their bodies. Now, in my studied opinion, those soldiers were attacked by some weird creature from the sea. You came in, did your boys in, and vanished again. <laughs> it was so funny. That creature, how silly. Did you really think it? <laughs> what is that, gracia? Este estúpido gringo cree que Alejandro lo mató un monstruo que salió de... ¡Silencio! Este estúpido gringo tiene razón. Yo creo que esto solo ha sido hecho por un anfibio desconocido de aguas desconocidas. ¿Qué es, Colonel? Bueno, el general dice que estás bien. Es un monstruo. Estas aguas son muy peligrosas. Debemos trazar una nueva ruta. The general says these waters are very dangerous, so we must plot a new course. Y de vuelta a la derecha. Ya. Yeah. De frente, marcha. Catch that? Our brave General Tostado didn't miss an excuse to blow the trip and change course. You think he's got a glint in his eye? Pure gold. Maybe one won't have to knock them all off. Oh. You boys are getting careless. I told you to kill one, not two. What's that? I got your count? Oh, 
Okay, Pete. All right, take the wheel. Well, well Jim, I, I thought it was only one. Well, I can't figure this out. So we were going somewhere I didn't know. Washington didn't know. Renzo didn't know. We all had to find out. Now, gentlemen, I think we ought to make our decision. Skull! Now, has anybody got an idea? About what? About where we're going. I thought it was to Ciudad Trujillo we were going. Oh, no, no. That's been changed. Well, uh, General Costado thinks we ought to change course in order to escape the monster. Eh, por fin, ¿dónde vamos, General? Caracas, Venezuela. No. Oh, no, no. I think we ought to go hey, to... Let's go to India. I've always wanted to see a... Actually, I think we ought to go to Cannes. It really swings this time of the year. Yeah, will you listen? It's so strange, my friend. I always had a secret desire. I always wanted to go to Bali, you know? Bali? Bali? Bali! No. Please tell the general that I am convinced we ought to go to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Él dice que está convencido el único sitio puede ir es a San Juan de Puerto Rico. This is Agent XK150 calling Agent XK120 via 190SL. Come in, Nevada. Now, the first thing we've got to think about is to escape this pinky monster. Now, if you take a look at the chart, you'll notice there's a lot of deep water just north of Puerto Rico. Too deep for the monster to live in. Well, how do you know he can't live in deep water? Because of his feet. He's a walker, and he's got to stay at the bottom. All right, stupid? Right, stupid. Now, when we get to Puerto Rico, we'll take the strong box ashore. Now, as an American, I won't be noticed. I'll take a plane up to Ciudad Trajillo. Take the box with me. I can say unequivocally, without the slightest qualm of doubt, that this gang is heading for Bali. I think the government should watch for us at the Panama Canal. Over. Que no perderé de vista de Santa. The general says it's all right. We may go to Puerto Rico, but he won't keep the strongbox out of his sight. Okay, it's a deal. <laughs> What do you think of it, Sparks? Looks like a Portuguese fishing vessel to me. Good guess. A giraffe. The Cuban Coast Guard. It looks like they're coming this way. Maybe they're looking for the gold. Hey, Pete. Tell Costara and his men to stay below. Sparks, see if you can catch a fish. Everybody keep your guns handy. I don't have any guns, Mary Bell. Give him one of your guns. Ow! Give him one of your guns, Mary Bell. Now, let's appear casual. Mary Bell, sing a song. Yeah. 
Uh, we're Americans on a pleasure trip out here. Well, I don't think you've got any authority to search this ship. I think this gives us the authority to search this boat. Well, as you can see, there's nothing on board. I haven't seen anything. I'm going to take a look down below. He didn't sound like a Cuban to me. I figured in this situation I'd better stick with Renzo, so I decided to knock out the leader of the Cubans with a fish I had on the end of my line. Sparks! Hey, good work, Pete. Listen, we better check the boat and see if there are any others. Oh, Maybe you can stop seeing now. You have this terrific voice. Oh, if I could only push you overboard. Your talents are being allowed to molder away unknown to humanity. You could be a star. The toast to three continents, your name and life. Let me take you away and deliver you. I just can't believe that you're real. She was madly in love with me, only she didn't know it yet. I think I smell land. Are we almost there? Oh, about six or eight hours. Another lucky shooter. Pause the point. Pause. You're ravishing. You're sick. Listen, I have a plan. As soon as we get there, we'll wait for night. And when Renzo isn't looking, we'll jump off and swim for shore through shark-infested water so no one will follow us. Then we'll steal a sailing dinghy and head for Brazil. How do you like it? I think it's grand. You ought to do it. Well, I'm, I meant you, too. Honey, I wouldn't ride on the same bus with you. Now, Pete, I want you to listen carefully. Now, on the north coast of the big island is a teeny speck of land called La Isla del Borracho, named after one of Columbus's lieutenants. It should be deserted by now. We ought to be able to land there, huh? Good. Now, there's a reef around the island and a very narrow opening which we have to go through. 
I am going to run this yard on the rocks, right at the entrance. Now, during the panic, we'll take the strong box, load it on a skiff, and head for shore. Now, Pete, when we get over 30 feet of water, I'll give you a signal. And then I want you to capsize the boat. You understand? Later, Pete, we'll come back and dive for it. You understand everything? Sure. Uh, uh, we, we hit the rocks, yeah. and then we put the box in the skiff, uh -huh. and then we dump it over 30 feet of water so we can come back and get it. And that's because it's still a natural glass run. It shouldn't be on board anyway. Hello, Morocco. Look at the reefs. reminds me of one time on Lake Minnetonka. Louise Schmidt and I were paddling along when what do you think happened? General says you have your orders as soon as he can estimate the situation. But well, you can tell our general Gotta be through giving orders around here. Now look, you men have no money and you have no guns and you're on U.S. soil. That's all right, I'm on your side. Pete, I want you to search the island, see if anybody lives here. Jack, you take one of the lifeboats and row to shore. Make your way to San Juan and rent us a fishing boat and plenty of diving gear. Uh-huh, come on, boys. Oh, well, Colonel, you see if you can get your men to build us a lean-to or something to keep the rain off. Atención. De frente. Make it. necessary, baby. Why? Well, the way I figure it, these Cubans aren't very much at diving. But Jack, Pete, and I are all pretty good spear fishermen. We'll go down, find the strong box, and hide it in a hole in the reef. After that, we'll tell the Cubans that it's no use. Give up. 
It'll be safe there for months, even years, until we're ready to come back and get it. You like it? Booksy, sometimes you are so smart, you make me sick. Uno, cuatro. Uh, oh, listen, I, I don't have the right change, so would you uh, mind uh, charging that to my home phone, which is in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, in the USA? It is 762-691. Estada Unida, Washington, seis, seis, duo, seis, nueve, duo, duo, whatever. Um, right, thanks a lot. That service is terrific. Hello, Santa Domingo Bar. Is there a girl there playing chess? You're right, I want to talk to her. Hello. I'll give you all my utilities and all my railroads for Park Place. Not a chance. Go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect your two hundred dollars. XK one twenty. Right. XK one fifty. Right. Listen, I uh, I can't really talk now. I don't know exactly what's happening or where I am, but I have the feeling that this case is about to bust wide open. I can't talk now. Someone's waiting to use the phone, but I'll keep in touch. Did you get that? Repeat the last part of that message. I'll keep in touch. Did you get that? Right. Which way do I turn this Dakota pin? Left. Left? Right. Right.
coño. Pete, aren't you going to introduce me to the lady? Isn't she beautiful, Renzo? <laughs> Very lovely. Where did you meet? Oh, no. That must mean they're in love. <laughs> I wish you many happy returns of the day. Oh, isn't that a ring you're wearing, Miss Sorcina Perez? It's a wedding ring. All oh, about 20 bottles, 10 regulars, masks, spear guns, the works. Oh, what did it as usual? Well, okay, we're gonna start diving this afternoon. I brought something else on with me, too. No, porque pongan todo eso ahí otra vez, vamos a muy... Carmelita, I'd like you to meet Renzo Capetta, my sister Mary Bell, Hi. Mr. Pete Peterson, and, well, I don't know who the large woman with him is. What's well, up, Perez? <laughs> Hi. Hello, everybody. You found this woman in San Juan? Well, she was living in a sort of sorority house down by the docks. She's awful friendly. Why don't you come on with me, honey? I'll show you our sorority house. Mr. Capetto, I have the honor to report that my men will be ready one hour. Ready for what? To dive to the Strandbox. You mean your men are divers? Yes, they are Cuban Army frogmen. I have situation well in hand. Mary Bell was weakening, as I'm sure you've noticed. Then she came into my life. I didn't see her coming, but somehow I sensed her presence and knew that my life was changed forever. Hello, who are you? Sparks Moran. As a trained espionage agent, I could tell that she was attracted to me. But I wanted Mary Bell. And Mary Bell wanted Renzo. And Renzo wanted the gold. Hey! 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 Spark! Spark! I'm an idiot! Let's keep this thing firm! You all right? Oh, yes! Oh. <sighs> All right, we're ready. Where's the Cuban army? I don't know, but I'm ready. Vamos from the los cubanos. A sumar hitnos. A sumar hitnos. The search for the strong box had begun, but the sea was cluttered up with Cubans, dispersed by General Tostada to search independently. All those Cubans alone in the deep. This was a chance for Renzo to again become the sea monster. A lonely Cuban had found one of the many wrecks on the bottom. Renzo had found the lonely Cuban.
their attack was cleanly executed. The victim was dead. The killers delighted, but not satisfied. Renzo must have another quart of Latin blood. We waited, sensing the dangers below. While the unholy three sought new prey. It didn't take them long to find it. It was a monster. Oh, you mean a monster? A real, live, honest to goodness monster with claws and everything. Oh, you're nuts. Hold this way. Carmelita, it's too dangerous for you here. Let's run away and live a little. No, no, I'm in love with the Sparks. Sparks Moran? Let's see. Well, how can you be in love with him? He's an idiot. You ought to be in love with me. No, I'm in love with him. And I don't care if he'll never see you again. Oh, if I'd only pay my life insurance premium, I'd kill myself. Oh, no, no. Oh, why now? No, you come with me. I'll show you. Come with me to the jungle. You seen one jungle, you seen them all. You come with me, you see and you like. Hello, Carl. Senor, I'm very much afraid of this monster. Well, let's just pick up and go home. No. I am an officer. We will not stop until we have this scramble. From now on, we'll dive with spear guns. Crazy. Your heart, Pichak. Uh, this girl is my daughter. Her name is Mango. Mango? Mm. Oye, me, la novia lo dejó ahora por un idiota y el pobrecito, tú sabes, quería matar. Pero yo le dije que no lo hiciera, que él necesitaba una persona que lo alegrara. Uh, I was telling her what that no good of Carmelita do to you. I was telling her to cheat you up. Oh, gee, thanks, Porcina. But it really wasn't necessary. Oh, you not like mango? Oh, yeah, I, I like it. Siento mucho lo que le ha pasado, señor. Es algo que le pasa a todo el mundo con mucha frecuencia. Es lo mejor. She no speak good English, señor. Oh, I don't think that's going to matter at all. Okay. Uh, I'm going back now. Mr. Pete Peterson Jr. He is waiting for me now. Well, adios, por señor. Adios. Are you all right, Porcina? Oh, I'm all right, my hero. <laughs> hey, who was happy, Jack? Oh, come on, I helped you to them. Yes. Oh, I don't know what you said, Mango. But it sure was wonderful. I feel the same way, Mango. Well, I never felt like this in my whole life before. A ella le gusta que yo los entusiasme para poder venderle sombreros de palma de coco y sandalias. Oh, I know, Mango. 
I know. Well, here comes Keaton for seeing it. Se parecen a los premios más baratos en una galería de tiro. Hi, Jack. Who's your friend? Well, this is Mango Perez, Porcina's daughter. Gee, she's almost as pretty as her mother. Yeah, she's wonderful. Yeah, but can't she do imitations? Well, I don't know. And I don't care, because I love her. Gosh, you're going to marry her? Yeah, well, why not? Why not? If you marry Mango, and I marry Porcino, I'll be your father. Woo! Forget about boy Paul with that. Oh, we cannot talk here. We cannot talk. My Mushu is going to talk you. He made big trouble. Yeah, I just had a fight with him. You know, Pete, I'm getting tired of all this running around. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to marry Mango and settle down here. Well, I could start a tennis club. They don't have clubs. They have rackets. You know, you're right. But you know something, though? I'd like to do the same thing myself. Say, why don't we rub them all out? And this way, we can keep the strong box for ourselves? Oh, yes. Well, even Mary Bell? Oh, gee. I don't know about her. Well, she is my sister. Of course, we could keep her around to do the housekeeping. Sure. And she'll get over losing Renzo. Sure. Well, how about it? Is it a deal? Sure. Besides, they've been cheating on their income tax anyway. Ay, ya yo me estoy cansando de esta jeringonza. Vamos a nadar quién? Mango. She won't go swimming. All right. All right. Where's Pete and the boys? They know we should be diving this afternoon. I think they're somewhere in the jungle. Señor, usted me está proponiendo una cosa sucia. Le exijo una satisfacción. What's this? What, what is this? This man's life is playing around with Mr. Pierce. He's very angry. That's tough. Mire, lo único que puedo hacer es venderla. Yo creo que 50 dólares y una caja de caldilla está en orden. This man wants to sell you his wife for 50 dólares and a case of rum. Television, that's... Ah, este dice que está loco. Jen, yo no acepto esa clase de insulto a nadie. Ahora le fijo 100 dólares. Carmelita, will you talk so we're busy? Oh, sure. I would tell him to cut down to 20 for a fifth of gin. Gin nothing? Who wants to buy his improbable wife? Come on, get out this battle. Let's get going. Soldados cubanos, de nuevo a sumergirnos. Una, dos, y... because I can't use them without Peter Jack to help me, huh? I'll keep them warm for you. Lorenzo Capetto had at last found the strong box. And the unknown partner had found Renzo Capetto.
What'd you have to do, Lorenzo? Why did I have to do what? Don't play games with me. Why'd you kill her? Jack, I swear I had nothing to do. I said don't play games. We all saw it. The same five incisions and the ground marks on that stupid toilet plunger. Why'd you ask Mary, but I gave her the rakes before I went under. That won't play. You had two more in your trunk, just in case you said, remember? Yeah, I remember, but they're still there. I can't convince them, honey. Maybe you can. Sorry, honey. I'm afraid I'm going to have to go along with Jack. You think I did it? Well, what else can I think? You made that monster up out of thin air, and I don't try to tell me it's real. I'm not that stupid. Well, I am. I always believed in it. But it's got to be real. Either that or the Cubans are trying to kill us off. I can't buy that. I don't care what you buy. From now on, we're going to die with spirits like the rest of them. We've got to get rid of the rest of those Cubans as quickly as possible. Now, we'll start tomorrow morning with Tostado. Jack? Pete? Possible death notwithstanding. The courageous general and two of his men dove once more into the deadly sea. But, as usual, they were not alone. Renzo waited for them to separate. One pulled away and then there were two. Tostada went on alone into the forbidding void, with the killers closing in. The giant observer stood watching over a pathetic bit of cloth, all that remained of mango. At last, Tostada had found his gold in his own watery grave. The general died as all generals should. His greedy murderers let his body drift away while they congratulated each other. Happy Jack found the scrap of a dress and knew what had happened to his beloved. Suddenly. You've got to leave, Mary Bell, and there's no one to help you but me. Oh, Mary Bell, I love you so much I could split. Get on! What do you do to my man? It was 
dusk. I could tell because the sun was going down. You were right, senor. All my army is finished. I knew when the general died. I don't care about the fox and more of the more. I don't want him to kill any more of my men. Neither do I, Colonel. I think we must go to Ciudad Trujillo in the morning. You can go anywhere you like. I'm going home. To America? America? No, I can't go back there anymore. Sicily. Oh. I've got an uncle there who's been after me for years to help him stamp grapes. It's beginning to appeal to me. Mary Bell hates me. I know. But I love you. Kind of nice having somebody love you. Why don't you try to love me? You might like it. I guess I can try. She pressed her hot Latin lips against mine. And I forgot everything but Carmelita. But our silent partner was not going to let me forget. This was it. There was but one thing a responsible, trusted representative of the United States government could do at a time like this. Get out of there. Hi, right, Bill. Hi. I'd just like one more chance to explain. Please. It's all right, Brooksy. It doesn't really matter. No matter where you go or what you do or who you kill. I love you till the day I die. Mary Bell, but he was the skipper and decided to go down ahead of his ship. in a monastery? Carmelita, I love you and I, I want to marry you and take you away from all this. Mm, that I would like it, I think. Of course, we'd have to live on the salary of an American spy, which is forty-one fifty a week. I don't care. You're so strong, so intelligent. You see how you solve the whole case? You're the smartest little few in the whole world. I'm not really as smart as I look, Carmelita. You see, I, I have to admit that all that time, I thought Renzo and the Cubans were trying to steal that strong box. But I was wrong. The real killer was the monster. So what? You're beautiful. So I got the girl. And guess who got the gold? Uh -huh. 